Okay, so section 18.7 is dedicated really to one reaction. Um, now there's two reactions here, but one major one. Okay, so under forceful conditions, benzene can be reduced to cyclohexane. Okay, so you see what's going on here? Each of these, we've seen this before, the reduction of an alkene, you saw this in chapter eight, uh, but in this case, requires very forceful conditions, right? You see that, you, you know what 100 atmospheres is, right? Very, very, that's 100 times more pressure than you have in your, uh, in your lungs right now. So that's very, very high pressure and high temperature, okay? And so, and with a nickel catalyst. So, uh, this, the, the benzene can be reduced to cyclohexene under extreme conditions with hydrogen and these, you know, extreme conditions. Now, is this process endothermic or exothermic? And you please tell me why. Why is it? How do you know? Okay, and why are the forceful conditions required? Another really good question. This has to do with aromaticity. Why are forceful conditions required? All right, now, the, um, the vinyl side groups, this is a vinyl side group. It's called vinyl. Where am I here? This is called vinyl. The vinyl side groups can be selectively reduced if we use uh, platinum. Look at this here. Where's my marker? Platinum, much lower pressure. That's just double what you have in, in your lungs right now. And room temperature. Okay. So if you have a vinyl side group, you can make that. Um, you can reduce that. All right. And it gives, it's also exothermic. So this exothermicity is just slightly less than the expected 120 kilojoules per mole, um, which you would typically get, okay? Why are less forceful conditions required? This is sort of related to the questions you addressed in the previous slide. All right, now here's the big reaction that we are going to learn in section 18.7. This is called the Birch reduction, All right? So alkenes can undergo a Birch reduction and here's how. You take sodium metal, this is gonna show up just like that, sodium metal, but there's really uh, an electron on it, right? Because it's, sodium metal's got one electron in its outer shell. So sodium metal will donate that one electron to this hydrogen, or to, rather to this carbon, and then that's one electron. And since it's the movement of one electron, it's a single barbed arrow, right? So another electron comes over here and makes a lone pair. That's what that lone pair is right there. So. The other electron that's in this pi system is going to come over here, single barbed arrow. One electron comes over here, single barbed arrow, makes a double bond, right? And then the other electron from here, single barbed arrow, makes a radical. Okay, so far so good. What's the hybridization of this of this uh, carbon here? What's the hybridization of this carbon? Um, hmm, the answer is not the same, by the way, between these two. A little subtle. I'm not going to get into it right now. You see a lone pair of electrons. That lone pair of electrons is acts as a base and can take methanol. Can take the now that's a double barbed arrow because it's two electrons, right? Taking that proton from methanol. These two electrons come over here. Just a second here. These two electrons come over here, double barbed arrow, and make methoxide, right? So after we have methoxide, we're left with an sp three uh, carbon over here and a radical not done not done moving on with that radical right you still have sodium in the soup so this electron single barbed arrow comes over here and boom oops 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 I wish I could undo that that was a mistake single barbed arrow I, out of habit I made that double barbed arrow Single barbed arrow, oh, that's really ugly, isn't it? You know what I'm gonna do? I never use my eraser, but I'm gonna erase that because that is so bad. Okay, let's come over here, go back to uh, Okay, single barbed arrow, slow, pat, slow, slow, boom, right? And so you get your anion now, and the anion is gonna do just what the anion did in the previous slide, come over here and deprotonate uh, meth methanol 
and make methoxide. Okay, and there you go. Look at that. Two sp3 carbons, and you have two double bonds. There's sp2, sp2, and notice they're not conjugated anymore. So this is a weird. This is really not good. I mean, this is, it, it's definitely not. Uh, we're losing our aromaticity. Um, and so a birch reduction is a bit unnatural and we force it with some strong conditions like sodium metal which if you've seen you've seen sodium metal react with water before right it, it just makes a, a fireball so these are pretty pretty extreme conditions it's called the birch reduction and it's a reaction that you need to memorize and it's a mechanism you should memorize all right so note that the birch reduction product has sp3 hybridized carbons on opposite ends of the ring which i just pointed out in the previous slide and here's you know how we're going to draw those okay we do this in methanol and ammonia you've seen this before remember we did this before what does it if we take these same reaction conditions here sodium and ammonia what's that going to give us you've seen this reaction before it's in chapter eight or nine all right now let's talk about uh regioselectivity it turns out if we have an electron donating group and alkyl groups are electron donating alkyl groups are electron donating through induction it turns out that this carbon is not going to be reduced That carbon's not going to be reduced. Uh, this one's not reduced. This carbon's not going to be reduced. This carbon's going to be reduced, right? And so we're going to end up with we're going to end up with double bonds here, right? You will not get the double bonds reduced if you have an electron withdrawing group. Now, can you guess? If you have an electron donating group, if this one's not going to be reduced. Uh, with an electron, wait, I don't know if I said that right. If this is an electron donating group, it's not going to be reduced. If it's an electron withdrawing group, electron withdrawing group, can you guess if it's going to be reduced or not? Yes, it is. Okay. So let's look at that. Next slide. So here's an electron withdrawing group. How is this electron withdrawing? Be a resonance. Okay. We, we looked at these as electron withdrawing with the Diels Alder. Remember that? So, we're coming back to it again as an electron. We're going to do it again in the next chapter. So, if we have an acetyl group on here, that's a carbonyl carbon. We have an acetyl group on there. This is electron withdrawing. And this is going to, uh, it did, now this one's going to be reduced if we subject it to the Birch reduction. All right, I think that's it. Let me look at my notes real quickly here. Yeah, that's it. Go practice with Skill Builder 18.5. Bring your questions to class. Good luck.